the formal opening of Mark Adams, the exhibit of his tapestries. And um, it's just really an honor and a pleasure to have this exhibit here. It's been only a year in the making. Mark Adams was a San Francisco artist. He was a, he designed great murals for the stained glass murals for Temple um, Emmanuel in San Francisco and other things, other stained glass. Um, he also was known as a watercolorist, but that really happened later on in life. And one of his biggest collaborations was with tapestry. So he, he started out as an artist and a drawer and, and studied with the painter Hans Hoffman in New York. And while in New York, he discovered tapestries at the cloisters. And also he saw a show of contemporary French tapestry. And he was very impressed by this medium. He was, he, it was unknown to him. So he sent off, he went off to Europe to study with the great tapestry artist Jean Lursat. And um, it was there that he really began to understand what that process of tapestry was. So, you know, I, I just want to start actually in the hallway because he also was married to the artist Beth Van Halsen. And Beth was a designer. Um, she did etchings and drawings. And so the two of them were this artistic couple that sort of, they didn't collaborate, but they were very, they worked together in their studio, in their shared studio and home, and were really supportive of each other. So the hallway is an introduction to who they were as a couple. And there are portraits by um, Beth of Mark. This is an etching. Down the hall, we have some beautiful watercolors by Mark. And it was one of the things that he did after he did all of his tapestry work. The watercolors were a much more intimate look at objects, and it was something that he could do because his collaboration with tap the tapestry artists, he designed the tapestries, but someone else actually wove them. And um, Mark, you can see how, you know, what a talented craftsman he was in terms of his use of shadow and just defining shape and you know his his watercolors are really a tour de force and so these are four portraits by the photographer minor white and they were done mark was also apparently studying at to get one point and so these were set up more like scenes with the in collaboration with minor white and then this is a really beautiful portrait of Mark and his wife Beth standing, sitting in front of the Great Wing, which was a tapestry that he wove and it was displayed at the Legion of Honor exhibition. Um, down this line, there's a combination of pieces. It's actually portraits of Mark by his wife, Beth Van Halsen, Mark and Saint Sari, and then um, Mark drawing this rooster. And what's so wonderful about this piece is that you see some of the roosters at the end of the hallway. So these were taken, hi Joyce, these were taken, were drawn when they were in France at the studio studying with Lursa. And they're, you know, just wonderful um, examples of their facility for pen and ink and for subject matter. And I have this whole group of Mark's roosters. Lursat was really known for some of his rooster imagery. And so Mark probably was influenced by that subject as well. So this is just a wonderful um, introduction you know, to the earlier time of when they were in Europe and studying with Lursat. And really what he did at Lursat's studio was to learn about tapestry design and color. Lursat was known for um, taking French tapestry and, and bringing it into the 20th century. And he did this by using a simplified color palette, a coarser weave structure, um, and drawing out these cartoons that were really amazing in terms of their subject matter. So Mark was really influenced by 
this man, and he also studied at Obasan for a while, so he learned how to weave. And I think what we'll do is just go into the next gallery and start with some of the earlier pieces. by looking at this, this piece, Queen of Heaven. Um, it's an early piece that was done in 1952. Technically, it's not a tapestry. It's actually a needlepoint-like piece. And it's, um, the, the wool yarn is sewn onto a scrim. It was a, the one piece that Mark actually created in this Room. All the other tapestries were made either at ateliers in Europe or in San Francisco. And this was the start of his investigation with textiles. And you can see the scale of it is really grand. And of course, um, the subject matter, he was queen of heaven. He was really interested in uh, lit liturgical subject matter. And this is something that, in, at least in his earlier works, he really looked at. So um, this piece has been actually woven as a tapestry, and I believe it's in the museum in Houston. This is a piece that, you know, has his hand on it, and it's, you, you can see, or at least you can think why he was so attracted to tapestry, the medium, because wool is such a luxurious material, and to have that um, use of color and the bold scale of the pieces, the grand scale of the pieces was what I think really attracted him. So what you're looking at in this room are some of the other, the earlier tapestries, a piece like this, Resurrection was woven in 1959. One thing to note when you look at tapestries is that they're really woven, at least in most cases, 90 degrees to how you see them. So they would be turned like this. And this is because of the line of tapestry. It's easier to weave a long line like this you get the detail of what's called a hachure mark. And this is a really wonderful example to see these hachures, where one color fingers into another color. It's a really distinct mark of tapestry, and it's something that um, Mark Adams really developed and played with in his work. A few shaped pieces, like the piece in the corner. And again, you have to look at the close-up detail and this wonderful star sh stars that dot the sky. This piece is called Ninth, and I'm told, at least from the catalog, that it was taken from Beethoven's Ninth, ninth Symphony. Mm -hmm. Bruce, do you want to speak about anything? Or maybe the pieces that were donated to the museum? Yeah, we have um, two pieces over here um, that were uh, uh, given to the collection. Um, uh, they are um, Night Banner, and um, uh, this is pieces uh, also woven in France, 1955, and Pavilion uh, woven in France, 1959. Um, I I love them because they just carry that that Matisse-like quality of the paper cut out in the line. You see, you've just seen his line drawing so much out there. This is a wonderful line drawing and tapestry, so we're really pleased to have these two pieces in the collection. Flight of Angels, and it's um, 1962. It was one of the pieces that was at the Legion of Honor exhibition, and it really is a fantastic tapestry. Just this, um, cascading wings falling, layers of angel's wings, and um, wonderful coloration on the solid yellow ground. The wings almost have eyes. It's just a very lively and, and fantastic piece. OK, 
Okay, we'll go into the next gallery. So the story changes a little bit in this room. Um, in 1976, there was an exhibition that was installed at the Legion of Honor, Five Centuries of Tapestry. And at that time, the curator, Anna Bennett, contacted Marjorie Livingston from San Francisco State to um, find out if they could have a student weaving demonstration. And she also contacted Jean-Pierre Larochat. So Jean-Pierre made, had a Aubusson style low warp loom made, and Marjorie contacted students, and Mark Adams was contacted, and he created a cartoon for the tapestry to be woven as a demonstration. So it was really exciting. I was actually in San Francisco at the time and saw this whole process. And you'd go to the Legion and see these wonderful, amazing tapestries, both historical and then some contemporary. And you would see the student weavers, and they were learning on the job, so to speak, <laughs> weaving a Mark Adams cartoon. Well, we don't have that cartoon here, or the tapestry, but it was the beginning of the foundation, the formation of the San Francisco Tapestry Workshop. And three of those students, along with Jean-Pierre Larochelle, started this workshop, which became the place in the United States for a time where people could learn to weave French-style Aubusson tapestry. And um, Mark would present a cartoon, and then the students or the tapestry workshop would weave it. So it was the first time that Mark was actually able to have his cartoons woven in the United States and work so closely with the weavers to weave, on, weave his tapestries. And it was a really fruitful time for him. And it was at this time when he designed, I think, some of his most exquisite pieces. So um, what we have presented in this room are some of the tapestries from his Hawaiian Sunset series and some of the original cartoons that he created. And the cartoons are presented in the way that they would have been woven, which is why you're looking at them in a vertical orientation. This tapestry is called Young Pong, and it's from the Hawaiian Sunset series. Adams and his wife traveled to Hawaii quite often and were just enthralled with the vegetation and the sunsets and the colors and, uh, and light of Hawaii. And this piece is just a fandango of color and intertwining palm leaves. And it's, you know, just to me an elegant piece. The use of the brilliant orange sunset background against the leaves and how the um, shapes intertwine. It's just a, it's a very complicated piece and yet very clean and clear. Um, the use of color, these, you know, how the color changes, this sort of fuchsia color, this soft muted mauve color, and against these brilliant oranges and greens. I mean, Mark was a, a colorist and really understood the nature of how colors reacted with each other. But in this case, of um, this beautiful piece, Lotus Sumatra, it's an addition of four, and I believe that two were woven. This piece is borrowed from the Oakley Museum of California. It's just an amazing tapestry of this um, flower, this incredible lotus flower rising up. And here, so it's, it's um, certainly a very spiritual piece, and uh, it's just it's amazing tapestry and artwork. Um, this, this was woven by two of the weavers from the tapestry workshop, Rudy Richardson and Phoebe McAfee. And they also will both be at the symposium later in June. Mark was also known for his lovely still lifes. This is um, a Mari Cup number two. You know, very much like his watercolors, he isolates an image, a subject. So I think whether he's working with a theme that's 
spiritual or something that's much more grounded and and um, that you know common in a way. He he still elevates it on a plane. His he. He has such an, a way with defining an object and capturing the essence of a flower, of a poppy with these few simple marks. And again, you know, just remember that the tapestry was woven in this direction and you can see those Hashur marks throughout in these areas and in areas like this. And, um, you know, the use of the flat plane of color, but then because of the way tapestry is woven, there are these lines in it that, are, that add a little bit of texture where the tapestry, where the weft was turned in one direction or another. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Those of you who are going to be gallery guides will have a few gloves available. So here on the back, you can see this was woven by Paul Avignon. And um, in French tapestry, they, they leave the wefts hanging out on the back. And I don't know if this one has, yes. Okay, so here's the little mark that I was thinking of. So this is an addition of six, and it's two out of six. And that's how they mark the additions. Can everyone see the dots? Do you want to talk about Lilith, Joyce? Sure. And I, I'll also just mention that this piece, um, the Apocalypse Clouds, is um, unique to the exhibition because it is not um, a um, discontinuous weft tapestry technique. It is a, a wrapped technique. So it's mm -hmm. um, in rugs. They call it sumac. and. Um, so you have a you have your same you have your structure of your warp on the loom, but the yarns are are wrapped, and um, it, so you don't you don't it's it is like a, essentially almost like an embroidery technique, but it's done on the loom, um, and I I had seen images of this tapestry for many decades, and I. Um, when we when I opened it up, I noticed that these diagonals are incredibly uh, fine. You see on so many diagonals um, and major lines in tapestry that you'll see the the stepped um, mm -hmm. where, where the line is built up as they weave up the the yarn, uh, weave up the warp, and so the stepped um, um, serrated line can be used as a design element, but also can be the real sign of mastery when someone can make those steps but really even it out so you see a, a very fluid line. So um, it's one thing that you look at in tapestry. This piece is woven um, um, with a wrap technique and so they didn't have the restrictions of a, of a tapestry weave um, in creating that line. And then for Lilith, this is his last um, tapestry design that was woven, 1999. And uh, um, as you're talking, Deborah, I really do see that um, Lotus Sumatra and Lilith hold his most dynamic use of color in tapestry. When you look at the gradations uh, going from light blue to peach to red, it's like, he used that in such a way, and I think it was so much informed by his uh, use of watercolor. Um, Lilith really takes Lotus Sumatra a step further and uses really dramatic color um, throughout it, going from one to the other. And then one thing that I noticed that I found really um, just amazing is um, Outline can be used to define a figure, and he alters the color of the outline depending on how he wants the body to recede and come forward against the background. It's a really beautiful technique. I really haven't seen that very much in a, in a uh, tapestry. So and I think one thing that I really love about the sunset with palms are these wonderful palm trees that divide the, the space and really ground the piece. And, and if you think about weaving 
this shape like this, it's just much easier to weave it, you know, in the direction, the horizontal direction. And it does move over a little bit. It's not completely straight. So you have this little edging that's going, it's just slightly going in towards the center. And then we'll move into the next room. I think that, you know, they're just in wonderful examples of how he captures the essence of the flower, these wonderful poppies, and, and the reflections in the jar, the water. I mean, it's just, he has such an elegant way of honing in on what that object is. A simple still life is, it's just ele elegant. And then you've got a little bit of texture detail that's going on. Um, just how simple this shape is highlighted by a little bit of orange, the lemon, it's just, just amazing how he had control and sort of understood the essence of tapestry and what the medium was capable of. On the far wall, we have a tapestry that's part of a triptych. This piece is called Pond in Golden Gate Park. And it was a triptych that was a commission for the San by the San Francisco Arts Commission for the airport. And this tapestry has a really interesting story because when the airport was closed for reconstruction, they moved the triptych, the three tapestries, somewhere, and one of them disappeared. It was at Moscone Center. Oh, it was first? <coughs> they were there in Moscone and then it was, it was stolen. Okay, so it was, it just it completely disappeared, it was stolen. And basically, a, a year and a half ago, the estate received a call from somebody who said, I found a tapestry. And they go, oh. <laughs> and the tapestry, they called the police and the FBI and the tapestry, they went and purchased it. And it was, they set up a sting and they purchased it and arrested the person. So it was, it's quite an interesting history. So in the meantime, Phoebe McAfee was hired to recreate from the cartoon this tapestry. You're looking at the original that was stolen. Mm -hmm. And Phoebe rewove this tapestry, and it's now at the airport with the other two tapestries from the trip deck. So this is the original. Um, we were so lucky to get it. It just came in the nick of time. It had to be cleaned along the bottom. Maybe Joyce can talk about that. But all in all, it survived its adventure out in the in the wild. And I think that if Mark was alive, he would be really, you know, sort of pleased to hear that it's back and, and, and it has been found again. I think this is really interesting, too. If you look in the hallways at the watercolors of the paper bag, mm -hmm. you know, he was just known for isolating that subject with shadows. And to do, do that with tapestry is quite in, incredible. The um, reflections in the water down below. It's a very. It looks really simple, but you know I can imagine that it was not either simple to conceive or execute. Mm -hmm. yeah. Specializes in creating. It's like light emanating. Um, I just on this piece, you know, I. Didn't think that much of it until we got it hung up on the wall, and it's just an amazing piece as well that the pairs are reflected in whatever surfaces underneath them. It's just a fantastic image. Okay, this piece is White Petunias by Mark Adams, um, woven in 1978 at the San Francisco Tapestry Workshop. And it's just a simple blue bowl with uh, casting its shadow, um, and the petunias are exuberant. They come off the page, off the woven surface. They're created with blends of hachure, which is the French technique for blending colors. It looks like fingering, and you can see the colors 
go from dark to mid-tone to very light, all in this kind of very tapestry-like technique. And it's just, you know, it's a, it's a gorgeous, gracious piece. I think the contrast of the light tool, the light um, petunias against the dark bowl, and then the deep red background is, is really typical of what Mark did with color and with bringing out the essence of a simple bouquet of flowers. I hope that this small tour has given a, a brief insight into Mark Adams and his work. And I invite you all to come and see the exhibit in person. It's a really amazing exhibit and a great honor to show his work. Mark was a fantastic artist, a Bay Area artist, and just, you know, we really appreciate and want an audience to come and see and appreciate contemporary tapestry. Thank you.